Well, hello, Steve from Steve R Photography. Today I wanted to do a little video on some news that's been going on. Not so much the Olympus uh, being sold to a Japanese company and uh, you know, and there's people talking about maybe Olympus will be no more, or they'll, you know, will Micro Four Thirds have a future, what's going to go on. Um, but there have been a couple videos that have come, have surfaced, and some of the people have made some comments about Micro Four Thirds versus Full Frame, and the idea is they could come out, full frame manufacturers could come out with a camera to compete with Micro Four Thirds, not in sensor technology or image quality, because they already have that edge, but in the portability, in the size, in the weight. And one of the ways they could do that is instead of having a, a lens, say a 50 millimeter, 1.2, 1.4. They already have a 50 millimeter, a, a different, you know, uh, and the 50 millimeter lenses aren't very big. So let's say, say if you have a, uh, a 70 to 200 lens, you know, you can make it f4, but rather than f4, maybe make it f5.6. It could be smaller, it could be lighter. And the reason for that is if you think of f2.8 on micro four thirds you go 2.8 to f4 and then to f5.6 two stops as we know uh, there's a two stop difference between micro four thirds and full frame in terms of um, depth of field and a lot of people, well, I only saw a couple videos, but a couple videos, and I think it's starting to catch on. Um, they're saying that that would be an equivalent system. If you had, an, say, a 70 to 200 f5.6 versus uh, a 70 to 200 2.8 and like four thirds, that would be equivalent. And yes, for the terms of depth of field, that would be equivalent but it would not be equivalent exposure wise because to get the same exposure you f5.6 you're going to have to up the exposure two stops you're going to have to either increase your shutter speed by two stops or you're going to have to increase your iso by two stops to get the same exposure because f2.8 at 1 25th of a second and micro four thirds is the same as f2.8 assuming the lenses let the same amount of light in you know large glass whatever but comparable lenses is the same as f2.8 and here's my issue with that that kind of reasoning if i'm shooting say like i'm in a dark scene and i have my off-camera flash off-camera strobes whatever and I'm shooting at 5.6 versus 2.8. That means my a couple things. Either my lights are going to have to be two stops brighter, which at a battery power that could be a big deal, or I got to shoot two stops or uh, two stops more sensitive in ISO. So that means my ISO now is going to go up two stops. Now. If I say if I was shooting at f4, I mean at ISO 400 and, and micro four thirds, and versus at the full frame, and I'm at 800, 1600. Well, now the the I guess the quality difference is going to be smaller now because you've upped your ISO. Another thing that I think is uh, that you got to keep in mind is with the Micro Four Thirds, they have great image stabilization. The Olympus is very good. Uh, the Panasonic is also very good. And they have it built in on the sensor. It's not, it's not tied to lens. I could use a manual lens and I'll still have image stabilization. A lot of times when I'm shooting people, it's not just the people moving in the background that's giving me blur, but sometimes it's more so the camera, me holding it, 
I might be providing a little bit because just a little bit of angle at the at the camera produces a more of a difference in distance over here in the, in the camera shake. So I can actually get away with Micro Four Thirds shooting slower shutter speeds, even though I'm shooting people who might be, you know, I'm not talking about sports and people moving, but basically portraits, they're standing reasonably still, they're posing, so they're really not moving, they're relaxed. That type of environment, I can actually sl slow down my shutter speed by a stop or so. So if I can do that, and on top of the two stops, now I'm three stops difference between my camera ISO and the full frame ISO. I'm not benefiting from the full frame sensor performance as much now. So that's, that's what bothers me about that thinking. The other thing that kind of bothers me is this whole idea that narrow depth of field is king. It, it's like we take full 35 millimeter full frame and we say that's de facto standard and anything less than that is negative. Well I can tell you from experience and especially shooting uh, full frame lenses, full frame bodies, shooting groups of people and making the mistake of keeping my lens wide open some of those people will go soft, they go out of focus. Head and shoulder shots with an 85 at 1.8. One eye is in focus. You know, the model's, you know, at an angle, a little bit like this. This eye is in focus, this eye is soft. Really bothers me. So I learned I had to actually close down for some of those situations. So it kind of negated. And I found more often than not, because I'm an event photographer, uh, there are a lot of people out there that will shoot models, single individual, and they, you know, and they, and they want the high fashion. They might just want part of the eye in focus or one eye in focus, and they want the hair going really soft. There, you know, there's whole, there's a whole market for photography for that. My style of shooting doesn't lend itself where I really benefit from full frame in terms of depth of field because I'm shooting groups of people. I'm shooting weddings. Um, I may have three, four, five people. I'm um, doing engagement couples, so one's in front, one's behind. So if I'm shooting full frame and I'm shooting wide open, my fast lenses, um, I'm gonna have one of the people out of focus. So it doesn't really help to keep it wide open. Micro Four Thirds, and even in Micro Four Thirds, I've done that. I had a couple on a swing and I don't remember which lens I had, but I had it wide open and I thought I had enough in the frame that the depth of field would take care of both of them. But the, the person in the back was just a little bit soft. I was able to get away with it. I was able to do a little extra, extra sharpening, but definitely if I would have shot that with full frame, it would have been totally ruined. So I find even in Micro Four Thirds, uh, there are times where I have to close down and make sure that um, my depth of field is maintained. There's, you know, all the YouTube videos out there. You, one could start thinking that Micro Four Thirds is almost like your iPhone, your, your camera phone, where it's just everything's in focus, a tiny, tiny, tiny sensor. It's not like that. And especially if you use fast lenses and if you use uh, good focal length lenses and you back up and you position your people and you think about what you want, uh, you can get beautiful um, backgrounds and even blow them out. Um, so that's the thing. I, me personally, and I know I struggled when I went to Micro Four Thirds, I was like, ah. Am I giving up the benefit of shallow depth of field? And you read hundreds, or you, you see hundreds of videos that you know people talk about, and and just bash Micro Four Thirds because of the sensor size and depth of field, and everything's in focus, and and high ISO looks terrible. And I can tell you that's it's just not true. Um, Micro Four Thirds really has come up 
to speed. I think if they do further development, it'd be interesting to see what, what happens with Olympus cameras and Panasonic. But uh, I think there's room for a little bit more quality out of that sensor. I think they can do it. As you know, the sensor in the uh, Olympus OMD-1 Mark III is the same sensors in the Mark II. Uh, it's due for an update, and they can do it. So I hope they do. But anyway, I think that covers pretty much what I wanted to cover about some differences in Micro Four Thirds and and this idea of making full frame equivalent or competing, make it desirable to people who like Micro Four Thirds by making it smaller. Because as you know, that the some of the Sony bodies out there are they're getting compact. They're they're good size. Uh, the lenses are still bigger because of the. Um, to traditional uh, f-stops that they're making them at but they were saying hey you could make it equivalent which I just argue not equivalent um, so I, I don't see that as really competing with Micro Four Thirds so with that I, I hope Micro Four Thirds keeps going I think it will I think there's a, enough uh, customer base for the camera and I, I know for myself um, Olympus just uh, released a new roadmap for lenses. So, um, one thing I will bring up uh, do I have the lens on me? Um, not right here. Let me see if I do. Okay, I am back right here. And I, I did talk about this in another video, but this is a great lens. This is a Panasonic. I think it's actually a Leica. And it is a 10 to 25 millimeter. That's, and I thought it had a different model number on this. But anyway, it's the 10 to 25 millimeter. So equivalent, it's 20 to 50 millimeter. This actually has an aperture f-stop of 1.7 constant throughout that whole entire range. So it doesn't increase as you go towards 50. This is what I was uh, thinking earlier was why not build more lenses like this that would really compete with a, uh, with a full frame body because this is this lens here is pretty expensive. It, it's a like a $1,700 lens, but for me it's worth it for a couple reasons. One, I think the the 20 millimeter is nice and wide, good for um, wedding receptions and tight areas. I get plenty plenty of angle of view with it. Um, I'd like it to go a little bit more than 50, but it, it works for that type of environment. 1.7 is great because in a full frame body you're not going to get a lens in this you know less than uh, f2.8 so this has a stop in a third and you know more light coming in so now i can shoot at lower isos than my other lenses that are 2.8 because i have more light coming in so that to me is a real big advantage and just think, what if Olympus, Panasonic, rather than doing a 70 to 200, well, Olympus has a what's equivalent to 80 to 300 lens, f2.8 throughout the whole range. Well, why not make that a 70 to 200, or if you can't do it, make it a 60 to 180 f2? That would be a whole stop more light coming in. And I don't think it would be quite as big as the 7200 for full frame. My 7200 full frame lens came in its own bag with a shoulder strap. I mean, it was big enough to have its own bag and own carrier. Um, so I think they could pull it off. And I think that would really make Micro Four Thirds 
Uh, if I could be one of the key people in Olympus or Panasonic, my push would be make lenses that exist in full frame or somewhat similar, but make them a stop faster. I think it can be done. Yes, they'll be bigger, but I don't think they'll be quite as big as the full frame counterpart. So, um, and that's, you know, definitely here, th this is great. I'm, I'm hoping more lenses like this will come out. I would love to see a, um, something equivalent, similar to a 70-200 F2. Uh, that would be a big advantage. So, anyway. Uh, Micro Four Thirds, I think, has some room for improvements. I think there's, if they go, you know, play it right, I think they'll get more buyers. So, anyway, love to hear what you think. Thanks for tuning into my channel. Take care.